November meeting of the North Miami CRA Advisory Committee. Uh, can we begin with the Pledge of Allegiance? The flag is to our back. Mm -hmm. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, divisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, we don't have a uh, don't have a quorum tonight, but we don't have any items that we need to vote on except for the minutes. So we'll postpone the approval of September minutes until our next meeting. Uh, but we can certainly move on with the discussion items. Call, though, for those who are here. Yeah. Uh, who's taking the roll call? Les Leslie. Oh, hold on. Aldwin, do you want to take the roll call? Yeah, go ahead, Steve. Clint Ball. Lanza Kobo. Here. Kenneth Each. Present. Lanza Kobo. Here. Michael McDermott. Here. Mark Warden. Excused. Clark Reynolds. Not here. Jeffrey Monese. Excused. Daphne Dillon. Uh, yeah, excused. And Mary Estes. She. She's excused as well. Excused. And Clint, yeah, Clint Bauer is excused. He's in uh, Tallahassee, I believe. And all of for the first time we have Mr. Claudio oh, Sanchez. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, Sanchez. Welcome to the board, Mr. Sanchez. Yes. Yes, welcome, Mr. Sanchez. Congratulations and welcome to our, our little family. So, um, all right, uh, with that being taken care of, um, Mr. Executive Director. Sure. Um, the first item that we have is the approval of our agenda. Well, we, uh, no, for our, uh, we don't oh, have I'm a quorum. Sorry. So okay. let's, let's move into our first discussion okay. item. Uh, okay. <coughs> which is the uh, first discussion item. Our first oh, dis is uh, Mr. Schnidman okay. and the... Um, that's, that's, that's the rating? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I don't have the same one here. Yeah. Okay. Ba basically... Uh, oh, it's this one first here. First of all, let me... Yes. Let me uh, IT... We have those funds here. If you're going to speak, you have to grab one of these and speak into them. Okay. okay so let's put them in a strategic place so that everybody can have access. Can grab them. Yeah. yeah. I think these mics here will work. Okay. These, these work. Okay. And when you guys, so want, you guys can share these. Okay. No, you don't All right. Mic. All right. Okay. Um, and, and Yeah. 
You add on to it. Okay. <laughs> but I, I think everybody heard me. Everybody uh, heard and uh, I what think what we're doing. Maybe got picked up over picked there. Picked up over there. Okay. So okay. Dr. Schnittman. Well, welcome. Uh, and I'm, I'm welcome here, and I really appreciate that. And I, what I'd like to do is kind of tell you a story. So since this is recorded, you can all turn around, face me, and just listen. Because I'm going to walk you through, without walking you through, the materials that I've submitted. I've been working with Leslie for two months now. And as the CRA executive director slash city manager mentioned, that in October of 2016, the CRA will sunset based upon an interlocal agreement between the city, the CRA, and the county. And it is the goal of the CRA board to get an extension of the life of the CRA. A condition preceding to doing that is actually updating or amending our redevelopment plan, which is really like the city's comprehensive plan. It's a Bible under which the CRA operates. And so for those of you who some of you have been you know, we're here with me in the beginning when we started the CRA, but we actually adopted the first redevelopment plan on June 7th of 2005. And that redevelopment plan was actually put together in a totally different world. Uh, economically, uh, the, we had not been impacted by uh, what became the recession, not only for the world and for the United States and the state of Florida, but certainly for North Miami. In addition, uh, the failure of the initial Biscayne Landing project uh, made it impossible for us to generate the tax increment that was going to be the foundation of all of the projects that were included in that initial redevelopment plan. We amended the redevelopment plan October 21st of 2008, and that was really an effort uh, bless you, Steve. That was really an effort to uh, include community policing as a responsibility of the CRA to provide enhanced uh, police services in the redevelopment area and to deal with the opportunity to issue uh, commercial paper to finance projects that we needed to go to the county for getting permission to, in effect, enter into debt. Now, beginning in 2009, we actually started the amendment process for the redevelopment plan again. So we've been working on amending the redevelopment plan since 2009. It started with hiring of Buxton the, for the retail analysis of the 125th corridor and the Northwest 7th Avenue corridor. And the idea there was to update statistics that were put together in 2003 actually 2002 that were used as the basis for some of the material in the findings of necessity that identified the areas that were of slum and blight that were going to be targeted for the, the redevelopment. In 2009, the CRA and the city also retained ULI, the Urban Land Institute, to do the uh, TAP, the Technical Advisory Panel, it was to look at the, the downtown area. They looked at, under our, our zoning code, they looked at two districts, which was the neighborhood overlay district, and they looked at the central city district, the area around 125th going north to, um, from 123rd to uh, 137th, basically, as far as north, south. It included the five points area, the downtown. And the idea there was that we were asking the Urban Land Institute to update uh, the information that we had in our redevelopment plan as far as identifying future retail activity, mixed use development, and the feasibility of a uh, hotel somewhere uh, in the city center. And so this was actually a part of the city's comprehensive plan because if you recall in, in um, 2009, the city was, city was also updating its comprehensive plan. It's two volume, uh, 2007, it's two, it's two volume a comprehensive plan. And the, the flu, the, the, um, 
the future land use element of the comprehensive plan has designations for the commercial and the city center areas as far as the densities and intensities that that now conformed with the desires of the redevelopment plan. But there were also a series of other studies that were being done and data and information collected by the city staff and by consultants. We had um, a major city capital improvements plan. We had transportation studies. We had a major wayfinding study, signs, a streetscape study. We had housing and then we had community development studies. So since 2009, we've actually been engaged in the data collection effort, the updating of information, and then we had the 2010 census. So we have all this new information that can be incorporated into an updating of the redevelopment plan, which was really based on information from 2002 to 2004 and passed in 2005. And of course, the, the latest report that we've had done was the report done by Keith and Schnars, which was the, the, downtown, re, the downtown development and major corridors uh, study. And that report is the basis of priority activity, which the city sees as important in enhancing uh, the tax base of the city of North Miami outside of the Biscayne Landing uh, redevelopment project. Now, the study <coughs> that was done by Keith and Schnars really uh, focused on six areas, five of which are important to the community redevelopment uh, agency. The Northeast 125th, which was, of course, the focus of uh, the ULI TAP report, uh, the West Dixie Highway area, the Northeast 6th Avenue, the Northwest 7th Avenue, the 119th corridor, and you recall that this, the city boundary is 119th, the north side of 119th is in the city, the south side is, is not, and then Biscayne Boulevard. And so all these studies, all of these reports, in addition to work that was being done in collecting information under the housing programs and the community development block grant programs and a draft of an economic development strategy for the city, this all of this research that's been done and all of the work that went into the data collection for the 2007 comprehensive plan um, are what we would use to update the 2005 slash 2008 redevelopment plan because it's important to understand that the county, in taking a look at expanding the life of the community redevelopment agency, will do that on the basis of the fact that we had identified areas of slum and blight and blighting influence, that we have a program of projects to address those slum and blight and blighting influences in North Miami, and that the budget that's needed to alleviate the slum and blight conditions cannot be met in the short term that we have left and that the estimated tax revenue coming from the increment in values because of development will over time generate the funds needed to either pay for or pay for the bonding that will actually cover these redevelopment projects that will alleviate the slum and blight. Now, what's important to also remember is the concept of community engagement and community support from not only members of the community, but stakeholders interested and involved with all of these projects. And when you look at whether it's the update to the redevelopment plan, whether it's the Keith and Schnarr's study for the downtown, whether it's the ULI TAP or the community development block grant research, all of these had community engagement in the uh, process by which they came from concept to final report. And so there really has been some significant airing of these ideas that are in, for example, the downtown and major corridor study and in other related documents. And I say it's important because in the schedule that you have in the action plan, we're going to provide the opportunity for the community to respond, but they, what's going to be in the redevelopment plan amendment is not new concepts, not new material, but what we are taking out of 
the studies that have been done since the uh, redevelopment plan was initially given and approved by the county. And what we're doing again is we're recognizing the change in redevelopment economics. We're recognizing the substantial decrease from 2005 in the ad valorem value of this community. We're taking a look at the failure of the initial Biscayne Landing project and we're taking a look at the reality of how long it's going to take until the resources are there in order to undertake major redevelopment projects. There's still a lot of work to do, as we all know, and with a sunset in 2016, there's really nothing left that we can accomplish in a major way. And so the issue is, what is it that the City of North Miami's Community Redevelopment Agency would do on a priority basis projects that the county would recognize as beneficial not only to the citizens of North Miami but to the whole county as needed to alleviate the slum and blight that's been identified um, in North Miami. So the key is to update the 19 goals and their objectives that are in the redevelopment plan and I've done that in the material that was distributed for tonight. We have to remove the infeasible projects. For example, the one-for-one one housing proposal that's in the redevelopment plan was a concept, uh, probably the most aggressive affordable housing program we had in the nation at that time, where for every unit of market rate housing that was to be built at Biscayne Landing, an affordable unit was to be built within the redevelopment area. It was either be rehabbed or built and that the funds that we're going to pay for that, because we're talking about 5,000 new or rehabilitated affordable units, was to come from the tax increment generated from uh, Biscayne Landing. And so the one for one, we were going to have 5,000 brand new units at Biscayne Landing. We were going to have 5,000 rehabbed or new construction of affordable housing based on the county standards for affordable housing. And a large portion of the redevelopment plan deals with that concept. And in fact, that concept is no longer a reality and no longer one that can be done. And in fact, if you remember, there was an entity of the developer. It was the captive developer that was going to North Miami Housing that was going to actually do this with the funds that were going to be provided through the tax increment. We also have to include new projects, and the new projects that would be in the redevelopment plan I'm proposing would be based upon the, uh, the, the downtown development and major corridors master plan that was done in, and finalized in um, 2003, I think May of 2003, by Keith and Schnars. We've identified capital projects and areas, and we'll be actually talking about other capital-related projects and supportive programs that would be paid for by the TIF that would be coming from not only increased ad valorem value in the CRA, but also Biscayne Landing as it begins to build out. And so the amendment to the 2005-2008 redevelopment plan is actually going to be a substitution. You're not going to see strikeouts and a new paragraph in, in letters. We're going to see a whole new text. And that whole new text is going to have modified material that was included in the old plan and a lot of new material that comes from the Keith and Schnars, comes from ULI, comes from the amendment to the comprehensive plan and uh, other studies that were done. Now, under the lease between the Alita partners and the city of North Miami, there's a requirement, there's a section, section 35, which is the community benefit sections with which uh, Leslie negotiated uh, with their, their team. And there are a number of requirements that relate not only to jobs and business incubators and all of that, which are, are now incorporated into the redevelopment plan because those are enforceable lease provisions, but there's also the commitment that they will assist in community redevelopment activities and so I've already had a meeting with Herb Tillman because I need the the lease has a development schedule which is no longer applicable and so we need a new development schedule and we need a new estimate of the tax increment revenues that will flow on a yearly basis from that new schedule from now until 
2045 to make sure that we understand what the TIF revenue from Biscayne Landing alone will be. In addition, once we identify and agree on what projects, redevelopment projects, to alleviate slum and blight are going to be included in the new redevelopment plan, Alita Partners is committed because they have the software programs to actually cost out those redevelopment project costs, whether it be a roadway enhancement, whether it be a building, they will actually give us the numbers that we must have in our redevelopment plan because the law requires not only that we have the plan, d d capital facilities in our redevelopment plan amendment, but we actually have a budget for their implementation. And so through Section 35 of the Alita Partners lease with the city, and their commitment to assist in community redevelopment, they will actually assist us in doing the amendment of the redevelopment plan by providing us with a revised build-out schedule, an estimate of the tax increment that will flow into the tax increment trust fund, and cost out for us the redevelopment projects that we're anticipating doing. So in, in the agenda package you got tonight, you had a cover memo that kind of gave an overview of what we were going to be doing. There's an action plan which talks about how we're trying to get to a text of a redevelopment plan amendment by March of 2014 that is something that comes from consensus of the community, the advisory board, the stakeholders, uh, and the board itself. Um, I've given you the revised working draft of the first portion of the redevelopment plan, which is all the goals and objectives, which is a uh, understanding of the history, the purposes, and so on uh, and so forth. And then it ends with a, a, a redevelopment plan concept. And I'd like to take a minute and just share a portion of that with you, just actually, actually read that, because it kind of puts into perspective what it is that we're trying to do in updating our redevelopment plan. So I'm, I'm going to page 26 of the... Um, <clears throat> updated redevelopment plan, the first section, and it's section 1.110, redevelopment plan concept. And it says that the redevelopment area is comprised of 3,249 acres of land, including portions of the Inarama, the Biscayne Landing Site, approximately 14,353 households and a portion and a population of over 44,000 officially recognized residents within the redevelopment area. Now, the redevelopment plan program developed from the many studies and reports that serve as a basis for this redevelopment plan amendment and from the community-based redevelopment goals and objectives has six priority objectives. We're going to be establishing a higher intensity commercial activity center and foster urban mixed use projects in the central city district node and the central business commercial district and along the major corridors of 125th, Dixie, 6th, 7th, and 119th. The central city district in the 125th quarter will have a priority in order to promote opportunities for downtown civic, cultural, and commercial activities. And we will be defining those in, in greater detail. Second of the six priorities that's listed on page 26 is to create for businesses within the CRA a financial and relocation strategy phasing out functionally obsolete businesses and buildings and fostering the strengthening by expanding or locating and a consolidation of the location of viable businesses to create a strategy. Three, to facilitate with the city as much affordable housing that is financially feasible because again the city is spending millions of dollars under its housing programs through the federal government and the idea is to coordinate with them to fulfill the goals of the CRA redevelopment plan as it relates to their location trying to make sure that we understand the meaning of critical mass and we understand the the value of aggregating rather than shotgunning an approach to redevelopment so that there is a, a spillover effect, that there's a critical mass that actually influences the surrounding area. We're going to identify the most severe and blighted housing conditions within the CRA and prioritize the rehabilitation, conversion, or demolition or replacement of these structures. 
Again, we're going to probably do this with the assistance of the city using the initially the city's funds that they have for community development program because and for housing programs because most of those funds are actually spent in the CRA anyway. And so we need to make sure that um, we're on the same page as it comes to where it is that we want to foster the redevelopment on a priority area. We want to create in the CRA and connect with a citywide system of open space parks and recreation areas connected by pedestrian ways, bikeways, and effective local serving transit. This is the result of a number of studies that have been done on mobility and transit. And though this may not be a priority in the short term until the tax increment is here, the city itself is working on funding a variety of different transportation alternatives. And of course, because the CRA is such a large part of the city, we want to make sure that we're sitting at the table and actually coordinating that with what we anticipate to be uh, capital budget activity of the CRA uh, as the TIF from Biscayne Landing and the increased areas in the other parts of the CRA go up. And then finally, to create a circulation plan that will promote CRA city identity, enhance the driving experience throughout the CRA and city, and prioritize the elimination of blighting influences and existing traffic safety problems of the city's road system within the CRA. And again, this is in conformance with the goals, objectives, and policies of the city's comprehensive plan transportation element. And it has also uh, been the result of a number of transportation <coughs> related studies. And we go back, of course, to the downtown development and major quarters uh, master plan. And it's critical that we understand the impact of prioritizing the expenditure of the funds the CRA has in the areas that will get the most bang for the buck, as they say. And so with the downtown and major quarter study kind of identifying what will have the greatest impact with the support from the ULI TAP study, with some of the other city work that's been done in support of the comprehensive plan, we have an idea of what would be priority uh, activities. And so if we go to page 27, it, it, it is in effect is saying that we're the phase one plan, this new phase one of the modified redevelopment plan has been modified to remove the one for one residential development process whereby affordable units would be rehabilitated and built for every market rate housing. Since the failure of the initial Biscayne Landing development and the termination of the one for one obligation, the phase one plan, which is what we're preparing as included in the redevelopment plan amendment, now focuses on and sets as a priority the redevelopment of the city center and the major corridors. And once redevelopment activity is underway, the CRA project and programs will be expanded to address the array of other goals and objectives outlined in the redevelopment plan. It should be noted that the city amended its comprehensive plan and land development regulations and that both now support the density and intensity of uses proposed in the redevelopment plan. It is anticipated that a phase two redevelopment plan will be prepared for submission to the city and the county for review and approval once the redevelopment of the city center and the major corridors is underway. The fiscal realities of the tax increment revenue stream necessitate this focus and priority decision making and the CRA board has made the decision to follow the city's amended comprehensive plan and work with the city, county, and state agencies to create a vibrant city center and enhanced major quarters of the North Miami redevelopment area and the city of North Miami. And again, what's been is it is we would in order to be able to accomplish the redevelopment projects that will be identified, it cannot be done by October of 2016 the tax increment revenue will just not be there. And in three years, two and a half years, we cannot finance um, anything. And so the idea is that under the statute, based upon when the CRA was formed, the county, the city, and the CRA can modify the interlocal agreement to allow us to have a life that can extend up until the maximum of 2045. And so what I've asked the people at Olita Partners to do is to look at their development pro forma and to, uh, in effect, 
tell me when they plan on putting getting things built, when they will go on the tax roll, the dollar value of that improvement, the resultant increase in property taxes, how much will come into the tax income and trust fund in each year so that then we will know when we will be able to engage in major financing work, whether it's commercial paper or it's bonding. And so, you know, Leslie and I have been talking, for example, about the realities of $50 million worth of financing for the CRA. And, there, and that is going to necessitate a, a tax increment flow of about $6 million a year in order to be able to pay debt service and still operate the community redevelopment agencies. We're substantially shy of that amount. And I know um, one of Leslie's comments was, well, the city can then just take out the bond issue and the CRA can promise to pay it back. But I think the city would be reluctant to, to do that kind of an activity and whether they would want to use their bond capacity for that is another question. So we have to be patient, but not too patient because the city is the one that holds the keys to how fast Biscayne Landing gets developed. And that's one thing that has to be balanced with everything else. And there is the increasing uh, values of real estate in the county. And hopefully we won't have the kind of hit west of I-95 that we've taken in the last two years as far as revenue. But the other thing about the Alita Partners commitment under the community benefits section, section 35 of the lease, is their willingness not only to help us in identified job programs. There's millions of dollars committed to whether it's business development, job development, job training, business incubation, but there's also the commitment to help us in the community redevelopment areas. And that's where, as I said earlier in my presentation, once we identify the projects that we want, whether it's a road project or a building project, a stormwater project, uh, the Alita Partners staff will actually cost that out so that when we prepare the redevelopment plan amendment, and we go to the county, we're going to be going with a Bible that includes everything that the law requires. It's going to have the identified slum and blighted areas that we have from our previous study. It's going to have the priorities that we're going to be setting based upon the information we've received since the last redevelopment plan amendment. It's going to have the projects as they're required to be by law, and it's going to have the budget that's going to be what they're going to cost, and it's going to have an estimate of the tax increment revenue to show the years in which we intend to be able to finance the projects that are underway. And so you have with you, for you, with you tonight 27 pages of the first section of the redevelopment plan. The sections that come next are the ones that say, okay, in the city center, the projects that we're going to do are and then in the Northwest 7th Corridor, the projects are. In the Dixie, the projects are, and we're going to cost those out. And I'm going to be using the recommendations from the Keith and Schnarr study to put those together. So that was based on two major stakeholder meetings. It was based on negotiations with not only CRA staff, but the city staff, review by the city staff. And so we'll talk about the things that are included and not included but basically, the material that will be included will come from the, ta the, the ULI TAP study, the Keith and Schnarr study, and interaction with uh, city staff. So that's about all I, I have to say uh, in introduction, and I'll open it to questions. My question, as it relates to the projects you keep mentioning, yes, we're not talking about those rehab or things such as where the client comes off the street and applies. We're talking about the CRA together with the city identifying some major projects to do in these areas. I think that um, the your description is accurate because the CRA does not have the funds to do both the level of, of, for example, business enhancement that it has in the past and do capital projects. We're not going to forego the business development. We're not going to forego 
involvement in housing, but the major focus is going to be on capital projects that the CRA identifies in order to fulfill the goals and objectives, whether they be traffic and transportation, a city center with municipal uses that will foster additional private sector development, or assistance in providing support for private sector development. And, you know, let me say that one of the issues, of course, that everybody says is that we don't have any major source of funds until the TIF increases. In reality, one of the significant things that the CRA can do is tell a developer that they will rebate to them a percentage of the TIF that comes from their project. So if they're going to end up paying seventy-five, a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars a year in property taxes, the CRA can agree that for the le the remaining life of the CRA, and if we're going to go to twenty forty-five. They will get back 50 percent, 60 percent, 70 percent of all of the taxes generated by their development. And with that kind of a TIF agreement, we're laying nothing out up front, but we're making a significant commitment that their uh, pro forma for financing will recognize. And with the contract with the CRA to rebate the tax increment with the understanding that the development goes forward. If the development doesn't go forward, the CRA doesn't pay anything. It goes forward, the traditional financing and the equity financing will recognize that significant role. So it's not like we don't have anything as an incentive. We have major incentives if there's going to be major development. Okay. Um, Mr. Bauer. Um, take the mic. Take the mic. Uh, uh, when do you think, when will your, uh, the rest of your plan uh, be ready? As far as the full text? As far as, yes. Uh, it should be ready in the beginning of 2014. Okay. That's when you'll have all the numbers from Olita it, Partners, it, et cetera. It, um, the text will be there by the, by the beginning of 2014, and then Olita Partners will put the, the numbers to the projects because I've got to have input on the priority of the projects. And so we'll do that, so it sh but it, it, it's not a long process. So uh, we anticipate... The end of January, uh, we should have a document that's fairly complete. Great, thank you. Uh, I'd like, Mr. Chair, I'd like to add to that. This is a process that's going to be involve input from this committee, input from the CRA board, input from community share, uh, stakeholders, and community residents, and the residents. So it's going, whatever the final document is going to be, is going to encompass every, every idea, every, every uh, suggestions that we're going to vet and make a decision on and p p put as part of that document. So it's not up to Mr. Schneidman to give us a document. It's a process that's going to work itself out and the document, the final document will, will take all these concerns into consideration. Yeah, and if I may uh, piggyback on Leslie's comment, uh, Mr. Chairman, the community engagement that happened both in the TAP and in the Keith and Schnars uh, downtown development and major corridor study uh, give us the base of projects to suggest, and then the community input that we'll get at this point will either validate that uh, or suggest uh, some of those aren't as critical or suggest that there are others that we may be paying attention to. Uh, Mr. H, you had a comment? Yes. So my I'm kind of excited about this, uh, this plan and the draft that you have going here. Uh, we recently formed the North Miami Housing Authority, and I spoke to our former city manager, who's now a deputy mayor uh, with Metro Dade, and I'm going to get down there and meet with him, and he's going to introduce me to several people with the Day County Housing Authority, so forth and so on. I want to get with the manager and our elected officials, and I think uh, the Housing Authority can work in conjunction mm -hmm. with your master plan here, and we can look for areas of redevelopment, such as Northeast 6th Avenue, where we can put workforce housing in there. And I, I think that would be essential to it. And also, there's other agencies out there. You know, there's talk about redoing 119th Street with the expressway. And there's pros and cons about that. But the expressway authority has a great deal of money. 
And uh, one of the things that I read many, many years ago was Empire Builders by a gentleman. That was a life story about Bob Moses of the city of New York. I mm -hmm. think you're familiar with that. And he was able to uh, use the New Jersey New York Port of Authority's money to build the Verrazano Narrow Bridge, which was a different entity altogether. And I, and I think we should explore some of those ideas and have some partnerships out there and uh, with the CRA possibly, if that's feasible, and other entities. Because today I come down, I came back from the Keys today, and I drive down 119th Street, and I leave the expressway over there. And I don't mean to editorialize, but I look at 119th Street and it's sad. It's really a sad commentary. And there's so much development that we could do over there to enhance that area. And I think we sometimes maybe we should take a revolutionary idea and look at it and say, hey, maybe we can put mm -hmm. warehouses, transportation hubs, so forth and so on. I've seen this done in other cities, especially up in Illinois. And we can, we can think dynamically. And if we have the courage to think dynamically, we can turn the city around and make it into a decent place. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Chair, if I, if I may. Uh, I, I agree with everything you said, uh, the Chief. However, we need to refocus what we are trying to do. Basically, the CIA is going to try to identify major projects to, to justify its existence past the sunset, since sunset years. So right now, as a major project, we're going to concentrate on redeveloping the downtown area. That does not exclude uh, looking at other areas that need attention, but we need to identify that major project that's going to say that that's going to make the county say yes. You need to be in existence another 45 years. I, I, I understand that, I, I, and I agree with you. You don't want a shotgun approach, and I, I think that was one of our detriments before. We we, don't, we didn't have a showcase to show. I agree, but at the same time, we cannot forget that North Miami is not only 125th Street. Right. Because uh, 7th Avenue could cry. And uh, I realize that, you know, 125th Street is a major part of it, but we also have to, to look at the surrounding parts of it. Maybe we could do something major on 7th Avenue also. We have, we have some things. The manager can address that. I said the manager in this case. The executive yeah. director. <laughs> um, I, I think that um, the vision that the mayor and council have, we have um, a new mayor who really understands um, capital improvement citywide. Uh, we have some opportunities on 125th Street that are, are long overdue. Uh, we need a downtown. Um, we can say that the CRA is just one of many funding sources that we're, we have on the table. Um, and um, at some point in time at the beginning of the year, I will be rolling out something um, very substantial and substantive to the council, something that we can just feel, see, touch, is there. Uh, the CRA is just only one component of it. Uh, I would say Dixie Highway and 7th Avenue and Biscayne are major. Just to let you know, when we didn't have any money at all, um, and we had closed shopping centers, we went and we solicited people to come into the city. Um, and, and we did that with no money. We had no money. Whole Foods was just, it was just courting the, those individuals. They were looking at another city. We just had to court them. And we did. They, they had to select between us and another city. But when we said, listen, we promise you expedited plans review. Uh, we, we promise you um, uh, the street to the north of you, we would do some improvements on that street. That, those are deal breakers. So when you do that and you got somebody coming, Navarro, 
Um, I, I met with the owners of that shopping center before Navarro even came, sitting down, let's go. Uh, I'm, I'm talking to Navarro, can you go with me? Um, so that, that's what's going to bring it. Um, so s without using funds, there was no city funds in that. So we have to be creative when we don't have funds to go out and do business development. We have to attract people. Seventh Avenue is a prime area. Um, uh, we have spoke with Dan Lima, Leslie and I. Uh, we have, we're making contact with the lady that owns uh, all of that land. Her, her, her father passed um, on Seventh Avenue. Yes. Uh, that place is just sitting there. It needs to, so we can put people together. And that's really what we've been doing is really putting people together. Um, we, the, mayor, the mayor and I met with RK uh, last week. Uh, we, we invited them to look at 7th Avenue um, and for us to put them together with some business owners who may want to sell the flea markets. Uh, so... And that's all that you're right. That's and the, horrible. And the, motel. and the motel. Let me tell you, we, um, w yeah, yeah. And with the motel, we're hitting it, hitting it. Where um, code enforcement has been hitting places. We've been hitting the apartment buildings. Um, we're now. Um, I had the code enforcement officers in here last week. Um, I kind of had to play the bad cop, and let their bosses soften them up. Uh, because there was things that we're not doing. We got, every now and then you got to hit them. But um, there are apartment buildings that the city has over a million dollars worth of liens. We're in the process of taking it. And, but it, we're the one right on 12th Avenue by Williams, we, Jenny uh, Brennan? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the one just east of that. Just east, yeah. uh, There's two buildings there, over $1 million liens. And, what, and we changed our code that it's not just the, that property, it's any property that you're attached to. Um, 7th Avenue, the apartment behind the flea market, um, the owner came in. Uh, again, he has property, he owns it clear, well, not clear, but he owns it, it's in his name, but he has other property in his name. So the liens follow your properties. And, and so we have, we have uh, all of his property, and we have about $600,000 on that one. But this is what we want. We want this done, that done, this beautification. So there are a number of ways to hit them. Um, the CRA is very active with no funds, and it's because we've gone out and looked at allocated funds and brought them back. And so we gotten to a point I think that Mr. Schnittman is hitting it right on the head. We have to get the sunset extended. We have to get those dollars up front. If we can extend it to 2045, right? There's no hurt to the city. It's not, it's not, there's no hurt. People say, I don't want a CRA that long. Uh, but, but without, when you say that without having all of the informed information, that helps the city. The, everything west of Biscayne Boulevard is CRA. So, including Biscayne Landing. Including Biscayne Landing. So why would you not want the county to allow you to keep your own tax dollars in your own community? Um, and especially when we have a mayor and council that are dying for me to give them a capital improvement plan layout. They want a city center. That's what they want, a city center. And, and on yours, uh, uh, Chief Each, um, we, we know that we can't give, you know, 10 million if we were able to identify 50 or 60. But you know, $2 million of 50 or $60 million will go a long way for the housing authority to go in and start getting the houses. We're working with Bank of America to give him the houses. I mean, we've got um, north of Kiosco. Uh, you all have, I don't know, those who get, that goes to Kiosco? Yeah. On, yeah, West Dixie. Okay, look at the house north of that. 
uh, $400,000 worth of liens because our code enforcement now is starting to pound people and pound them and, and hit them again. Uh, if you didn't do it, we're hitting you again. So we're forcing the banks to say, you know what, it's not worth it because bank on, I'm not forgiving you. So give me, the, give me the property. So when we give that property and transfer it over to the housing authority, we don't, we're not buying it. We're trying to find creative ways to get it without spending the money, and, and that's what we're doing. So you will have houses. Well, we may need money to fix them up, but at least you have the land, the houses, um, the shell. That's, that's what I have to work on now with the county. And the county. Uh, yes, so when you get that funding, at least they say, well, what do you have? What's your inventory? Well, Bank of America just gave us eight houses. Yeah, so we, we have a lot going on. And I think what Mr. Schnittman, Dr. Schnittman is, is doing here, um, it will really put North Miami on the map uh, because of Biscayne Landing. It, and if we don't capitalize on it, we would definitely miss the boat. You got uh, Miramar, you got mm -hmm. Miami Gardens, all with their town centers. It's time for North Miami to have a town center, right, right downtown. And, yeah. and we can do it, especially... Uh, when I speak to the mayor and council, that's what they want. They they don't want money going out to dibbling and, dabbling. dibbling and dabbling. They're thinking big here. I can tell you Mayor Tundra is thinking big. She wants a downtown. She wants a town center. That's how big she wants it. She doesn't want it next uh, uh, two years from now. She wants a plan January, February. I got to give her a plan. So. Thank you. Sorry, it took so long. Oh no, that's wonderful. But yeah. but I, I just think with Dr. Snitman here, we got to capitalize. Yeah, if I could, uh, before, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, I guess to uh, Mr. Johnson and somewhat to you, Mr. Shidman, uh, maybe the CRA can identify some uh, properties that they consider to be really blight and eyesore or things that they would like, even sure. though that there is uh, no negotiation with the, you just it up. No, it was it's on. On. with the owner of that property. But that will give us some idea as when we sitting down, because there are some things that as was discussed that if you do public, uh, well, public-private uh, partnership yeah. that can be done. I mean, even so far as do we have individuals who are grant writers so that you can obtain some funds for some things. You know, off the top of my head, I'm thinking of, you know, places, uh, art places or mm -hmm. something like that that we can identify. And there are organizations that have fundings mm -hmm. that would be willing to, if you say, hey, I'd like to build this, this is what we have. And, and even the owners of these properties may not, I mean, unless you bring something to them to sort of like twist their arms, it's not going to happen. Some of them want to sell. I, I, I know that for a fact. Um, I don't want to go into all who wants to sell, mm -hmm. but I would tell you it's unbelievable who wants to sell. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I don't say who is because we're being televised and I like to negotiate without real estate agents, no, uh, nothing against anybody. But uh, when people hear, then all of a sudden I'm being represented and um, so. Uh, now, Mr. No. Chairman, if I might make a comment, following up on the executive director's remarks and Ken's marks, remarks. Um, a couple of years ago, the voters in Broward County being upset with the way the county was spending its entitlement funds and all the entitlement cities on as it related to affordable housing. That's right. By charter, they amended the charter to create the Broward County Housing Council. And by charter, the citizens decided who would sit on that oversight board. One of the seats went to FAU, and I sit in that seat. So in my other hat, I sit on the Broward County Housing Council, which deals with a dozen entitlement communities mm -hmm. as well as the county. And the 
The reality of it is often overlooked is the other CRA, the Community Reinvestment Act, which is a federal act which requires banks to spend a certain percentage of their funds in areas that are designated as slum and blighted, which is the CRA. And in fact, Bank of America is one of the banks that really yes. has a challenge in order to meet its obligations. Mm -hmm. And in Atlanta, at the Federal Reserve, they monitor all of this, and they can tell you which banks are current and which are not. And the Bank of America can do a lot more than just give you the houses that they've Absolutely. taken back. They actually can write checks as, and, and support um, qualified applicants in getting financing to buy uh, assisted uh, you know, ownership housing. And so there's a whole mm -hmm. tool bag of, uh, of things. And uh, you know, the, C the CRA's role, the CRA does have a trust fund, but you know, from a, a logistical point of view, you know, commingling federal funds with the trust fund is not a you know, great idea, but it's also a good idea that the city has a housing authority the city's got a community development block grant funds. The federal government has a host of programs. The Community Reinvestment Act requires banks to participate. And so uh, there is, there's more than you will live long enough to really study and learn. Thank you, Rosanne. Um, is there anybody else before we uh, hear from our council? that we have the team we have between our city manager and our CRA coordinator and 
our CRA attorney, the board, and I think Mr. Stinman coming on, I think is going to really hopefully good addition. Make, good addition is going to mm -hmm. make this whole thing really work. So we're glad you're on board, Frank, and you you bring such expertise and experience. It's um, I think we're we're headed for a great success with this CRA. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we'll have success with the CRA advisory committee and the CRA board. The challenge will be having that level of success with the with the county. Well, it's a process, and I guess we'll have to do what we have to do to work the process and make it work at the end. Mm -hmm. I, can you hear me now? Is that what it was? Okay. Anyway, the long story is, I don't want to repeat myself, but Frank, thank you very much, and we look forward to a great, and thank you again, Steve, and Steve, and Leslie. Uh, I think we're going to move forward, and uh, it's going to be a, a great accomplishment of what we can do here. So uh, unless there's anybody has any other additional comments, is there any old well, business? Well, I'd, like, yeah, okay. I'd like to point out some things in the documents that Dr. Stidman prepared. Uh, he has all... Uh, calendar that we need to look at and and make sure that 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 we yes I'll, I'll that, that uh, actually uh, dr. Schneidman uh, I'd like you to take a minute and yes. and, and, and and let's let's uh, point out the salient things on the calendar that we need to be addressing in the next uh, month or so things that are coming up, things that we need to do, timelines, and et cetera. Right. I think that, um, you know, one of the things that, that's always important is that every time you have a meeting, the notices have to go out on time and the material has to go out on time. And so in November, um, in addition to meeting with county staff and county commissioners, and I actually a good idea to meet with the city lobbyist, um, we really have to... Um, uh, get before the board and make sure the board understands uh, everything that is that we've gone through tonight, and that'll happen uh, next Tuesday. Um, you know, it, it's going to be interesting because I think on the agenda for the uh, CRA board, we've got the annual report and the audit. We've got the 13-14 budget um, in addition to the redevelopment. We have an amended budget for 12-13 yeah. as well. Okay, so we've got we've got that to deal with, but as we begin to move into December, it's going to be important to understand that we've got to figure out a way to deal with community engagement, and we've got to figure out a way to deal well, with uh, making sure the county's on board with what we're doing. It's important that the county uh, not only get the redevelopment plan, but that the county knows that it's coming. And so we'll have to meet with them to just get everything organized. In January, we hope to have a document that everybody can start, you know, criticizing and editing and amending, but it'll be really what will go to the county. We can have some serious, serious discussions. And so on the 6th to the advisory committee and on the 14th to the, the board, we're going to have a fairly complete document that we're going to say these are the projects Alita Partners is doing the the numbers for us, but we're going to be able to go to the county um, shortly thereafter. Um, you know, the final presentation, uh, we're going to, on the 3rd of February, we're going to be requesting a recommendation from this board, from this advisory committee, to go to the board. And then on the 11th of February, we're hoping that the CRA board will agree that the document is ready to go to the county. And then there's a county committee that we have to go to and then the county commission itself. And so we have to, in effect, January and February, line up the interaction that we're going to have with the county. And so uh, you may say, gee, that's pretty fast. But the reality of it is that because of the Keith and Schnarr study, because of the ULI study, because of the engagement that happened there, and because of the assistance of Alita Partners, we're going to be able to put the text together and then the question really is, will the county support the capital projects? And what we have to do is we have to show the value to the county of actually improving the projects that are in our redevelopment plan. Because they're not only things that benefit the citizens of North Miami and our visitors, they benefit the county as a whole. If we make 
transportation better, if we increase the attractiveness of a downtown, if we, if we take 119th and 7th and 6th and 125th and Dixie and we improve them, it benefits the quality of life for everybody in Miami-Dade County. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, Blanca, you want to make a comment? I wanted to make a comment that uh, the corridor of 7th Avenue, yep. 119th, yep. Biscayne, the traffic there is tremendous. And really, when you travel on 119 and on 7th Avenue, it, it makes you feel, gosh, th these things have been here. I've been in the city for 46 years. They've been there since I moved here. And it really needs improvement because it could be more attractive and want people to be in the city of North Miami mm -hmm. if it looks better. And that's uh, your comment about uh, Nordstown um, yeah. propane. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Thank you, Blanca. And we know all of that because we all travel there. Yeah, exactly. Okay, unless there's any other comments, um, any old business to come before us? Okay, any, there is some new business. Number one, I'm going to pass this out to everybody. Um, okay, we pass these out. This is, uh, it's interesting that this year's ABCs of CRAs are, um, the topic is amending your community development plan. So it's interesting that's the topic. You have one? I can't go. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so I, I'm going to be asking I'm going to be asking the city manager to again um, provide some funding for those of us who want to go. I ask him to consider that. Well, we will be happy to pay for anybody who actually goes. Oh, However, uh, the last time most people we paid and most people did not show up, so we'll do a reimbursement schedule. We'll do a reimbursement schedule. They pay for it, and we reimburse as they attend. And, and between Steve and Mr. Smith, uh, for those of us who can't make it, because I know the young lady sent us a document last time, which I've saved, and I keep going back. If they would do the same thing with the of course. important document, of course. just send it to the member's email. Mm -hmm. okay. Of course. Thanks. The other thing, I, I'm, I'm sorry, um, I'd like, I'm going to ask the city manager through the um, CRA coordinator. I think it would be really good if we went to visit a CRA that has gone through some of this and seen what they've done. I know that Riviera Beach is a wonderful, I think you have some suggestions of a... Uh, Riviera uh, Beach a little far. Yeah, um, but, you know, uh, Delray far Beach more. would probably be Delray? more appropriate because Atlantic Avenue and 125th have some similarities. Yeah, Their bypass... Even, that's one of the places we visited many years ago. So we'd like to. Well, I, I think the difference. Time to go up and see what they're doing. Uh, Delray Beach. We'll, we'll, we'll be, be happy. I, I did uh, visit myself. Yeah. Uh, actually, when I was thinking of uh, uh, joining, uh, I being uh, being interviewed yeah. for a CIA coordinator position, I went to visit. Uh, it's a very good idea to go visit to see what these people do. Mm -hmm. And the director up there in Delray Beach is excellent. He's yeah. He shares, he's, he'll, he'll take a moment to really show you. He's proud of what they accomplished, so he wants to show off. So he'll be happy to accommodate All us. Right, so if you'd uh, convey our wishes to I will schedule I'll that to the city manager, to our CRA. The challenge is to get a convenient time where everybody can go. Can so. work on that. Okay. okay, no problem. Is there any other new business to come before the? Yeah, we're going to do Okay. Yes, um, even though we don't have a quorum. Move to adjourn. No, Aye. November 21st, Aye. Pardon? November 21st for the ribbon cutting for Abdul's property. Okay. November oh, yeah. 21st. Okay. Lunch uh, uh, Town. I'll stop. Uh, Town. That's a CIA one. Thursday. Again with the Thursday, but okay. It's, 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 it's Noon on Thursday the 21st. Uh, I'll see if he can perhaps. I'll give, him a, I'll give him a call. Alright everybody, thank you very much.